5 Historical Books with Far-Reaching Effects Number 5. The Pilgrim's Progress, John Bunyan John Bunyan's The Pilgrim's Progress from this world to that which is to come is the story of the subtly named Christian, a man who leaves the city of destruction to find the celestial city on Mount Zion. In other words, it's an allegory about the religious journey from earth to heaven which was the kind of thing people liked to read about in 1678, when the book was published. Interestingly, Bunyan wrote a lot of the book from prison, having spent a total of 12 years therefore preaching without a license. Doing this via literature wasn't against the law, though, and his book became an instant hit, and won him widespread fame. The Pilgrim's Progress is notable for being translated into over 200 languages, more than any other book save the Bible, and being one of the most read books in English. As for Bunyan, apparently his fellow Puritans begged to be buried next to him when they died, and not, for some reason, the actual Mount Zion. Number 4. Bruges La Mort, George's Road in Bach. The Dead Bruges, as it could be called in English, is a short novel published by the writer Georges Rodenbach in 1892. It takes place in the Belgian city of Bruges, where a man named Hugues Vian moves after his wife dies. He is absolutely stricken with grief, despite his cool new city, and lives in despair for a while amidst the relics and possessions of his late love. Eventually he meets another girl, but, spoiler alert, ends up strangling her because she's not enough like his dead wife. The book received a fair amount of success upon its release, but is most notable for a few different reasons. Most importantly, Bruges La Mort was the first work of fiction to ever be illustrated with photographs, mostly shots of the city. It was also quite possibly the inspiration for Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo, another classic, as well as being one of the most significant symbolist novels ever written, which basically just means that very little happened in it. Number 3. The Songs of Bilitis, Pierre Lys. Here's another one written in French, this time by an actual French writer, as is probably evident by his name. Pierre Lys' Les Chansons de Bilitis is an 1894 book of erotic poems, which he claimed in a foreword were written by an ancient Greek woman named Bilitis. This actually fooled a lot of scholars for quite a while because the poems expertly echoed the writing of the Greek poet Sappho, of whom Lys claimed Bilitis was a contemporary. Of course, the poems were actually written by Lys himself and, given that the name he gave the fictional discoverer of Bilitis poems was the equivalent of Mr. S. Eckert, you'd think the scholars would have realized that immediately. In any case, the collection is most significant for its acceptance of lesbians, such as Bilitis and Sappho who weren't treated as equally in 1894 as they are today. In fact, the book inspired the propagation of gay rights, as well as the name for the Daughters of Bilitis, the first lesbian civil and political rights group in the United States. Number 2. Bhagavad Gita The Bhagavad Gita, commonly referred to as simply the Gita, is an important scripture contained within the ancient larger Hindu epic Mahabharata, larger as in ridiculously larger, as in almost two million words. The verses of the Gita, arguably the most important part of the Mahabharata, relate the philosophical and theological wisdom of Lord Krishna to the protagonist, Arjuna. This sounds a little dry in theory, but the work is notable for influencing so many significant people throughout the years, religious and non-religious types alike. People like Albert Einstein, Aldous Huxley, and Carl Jung, who all praised the work. And J. Robert Oppenheimer, who headed up the Manhattan Project during WI, famously quoted the Gita after the first successful atomic bomb test, Now I am become death, destroyer of worlds. Most significantly, perhaps, was Mahatma Gandhi's appreciation of the book, he called the Gita his spiritual dictionary. Number 1 the Golden Ass, Apuleius. But enough about philosophy and spiritual fulfillment already, let's talk about asses. 
The Metamorphoses was published by the Latin writer Apuleius around the late 2nd century AD, but it's more famously known as the Golden Ass, which is what we're going to call it. It's a humorous account of a guy named Lucius, who tries to turn himself into a bird and ends up becoming a donkey instead. He then has to go on a journey to free himself from his corporeal prison, which he accomplishes through the timeless fashion of joining a cult. The book is important for a couple of reasons for one, it was one of the first ever picaresque novels, and for two, The Golden Ass is the only Latin novel to survive in full, so now you have no excuse not to read it. Thank <laughs> you.